imitate your life through our simple words and deeds. Let love be multiplied. Hello, everybody. Grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and welcome to Articulating Faith. Today's topic is going to be. What about all the denominations and um, divisions and split ups in the church? And this is also for new Christians. What to do in this situation and how to sort it out? So let me give you a few things to look for when picking a church. Number one, and probably the most important thing, is it must be monotheistic, meaning they believe in one God. Um, so any affirmation of the Trinity or if they say, you know, I follow one God and I believe that there's only one God is something to look forward to or something to look to rather. Um, another thing is they must follow the teachings of Jesus. Uh, sec a third thing for the church is it must be loving. It must be a loving and compassionate and place you, you want to be. Uh, and fourth topic is it must stick to the Bible and biblical principles on how to deal with certain ethical, uh, moral, and relationship and worship situations and all the various dynamics of how the Bible deals with our everyday life and um, encouraging uh, people to live in a godly fashion. Um, another thing is it must encourage prayer and scripture study. Um, or it should encourage prayer and scripture study. Um, then we have the question of, well, I'm a new believer, and this person might be asking, why should I go to church? Well, it's quite simple. That uh, The Bible says, forsake not yourselves the gathering of one another together. Um, there's, a, there's a whole issue that we are together with the church um, to build one another up and to, to collectively work together together to shun evil and and work for mankind for the better of betterment of mankind and so we can do this better together rather than individually spread out all over and we see this most probably with uh, what the church is doing in Africa and uh, in a lot of these third world countries um, also think of it like if I may use the analogy of a fireplace all together, you have the coals together, providing the warmth, providing the sh the comfort, providing um, the ability to cook food, and all the great things that a fire fire does. But w what happens when you take a coal out? It becomes black. It be it cools down. It becomes no good. And so together in the fire, it uh, it's really how how you. Keep also that fire of God living in you as with one another to help build you up. Um, then I would say, well, okay, well, what about all these denominations? That's certainly a valid question that people ask. Well, quite simply, that if people are putting their church in front of God or in front of the teachings of Jesus or a pastor or a, or a priest or whatever in front of the teachings of Jesus... Well, then I really have to question that church's um, authenticity or or whether they're truly for God. And so it's, you know, if, if somebody calls themselves Protestant or uh, Pentecostal or Catholic or Baptist or whatever, uh, you know, as long as they have Jesus as their Lord and they, they live accordance to his teachings, they're my brothers and sisters in Christ and we're all one, uh, part of the this great church that has been uh, just throughout the ages, um, working at its best, trying to um, work for the greater good. And here's a little bit of what the scripture has to say about this. Um, this is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and I'm starting at verse 10. I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another so that there may be no divisions among you, and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers, some from Chelio's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. And another, I follow Cephas. Still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized into the name of Paul? 
I am thankful that I did not baptize any of you except um, Crephas and Gaius. So no one can say that you were baptized into my name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with words of human wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. And so it's very important that we aren't divided and quarreling. Now, this doesn't mean that, you know, um, that we can't have friendly debates and discussions over various uh, scripture and our opinions and uh, what God has revealed to us in what the scripture means, but it, it means that we shouldn't consider a brother from another church or a sister any less Christian than we are simply because they're of a different denomination, that this is not um, the point of denominations, and this is not uh, what what uh, Christ taught. And also 1 Corinthians 11 and uh, starting from verse 18, we read in the following uh, directives, I have no praise for you, for you, for your meetings do more than more harm than good. In the first place, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you. And to some extent, I believe it, um, no doubt that, no doubt there have, there have to be differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. When you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper you eat. For as you eat, each of you goes ahead without waiting for anyone, anybody else. One remains hungry, another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you, ha or do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you for this? Certainly not. So again, these were some divisions that was that were going on among the Corinthians uh, at church. And so actually I would encourage two to one another to discuss and have friendly debates over the scripture. That That's perfectly fine. But I think that um, in a lot of the online forums that Christians will bicker over various scriptures and an atheist or a Muslim or a Buddhist or whoever it is will come in the room but they won't stop their bickering. And this isn't really something that people who are outside of the church really need to see or should be exposed to. So I would encourage the people stop their quarrels between each other and um, really try and pray and um, speak uh, words of blessings into these um, people outside of the church and answer their questions rather than worrying about... Um, discussing scripture with one another and that should be set aside with trying to bring the lost to Christ um, another th a few other things that the church should be doing is it should be active in the community and or around the world um, and also everybody in the church should be equal regardless of race job positions including inside the church and financial positions um, now here are a few things to avoid when looking for a church to go to um, if a church puts their pastor's name uh, or their pastor as a prophet or put them above Christ, well, that's definitely a red flag. But I notice a lot of these self-proclaimed prophets online um, or on, the, on TV really are just money grabbers. And so it's really good to avoid those wherever possible. And some of these healer uh, evangelists. Um, another one is if if the name, in the name you can really tell, like Benny Hinn Ministries or Peter Popoff Ministries, when their name is in the, the title of the church, it's really something that should be putting up a red flag is because they're bringing glory to themselves and not, you know, if, it's, if it has a scripture um, theme or bring glory to God in the name of the church, uh, really will show you where their heart is. Um, another thing is a church that asks for a lot of money. Now, now that's all right if because we're in financial uh, problems around the world. But if they're asking for a lot of money, but they're not showing their f uh, financial statistics or what's going on, that's really something you need to 
wonder about whether you should be even giving to this church um, because if they're going to start asking for money um, because of their debt that they're in, well, they should also share with the congregation what they're spending their money on so that maybe somebody could input and properly assess what to do with the money rather than ask for more and be um, spending it in a foolish way. Anyways, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.